David Harding at Hamble Point Marina. Uh, slightly noisy Hamble Point Marina with quite a lot going on in the background. And I'm here to have a look at the Fico S35. is the first one in the UK. Just been over here for a relatively short while. And built in Poland, designed by Sergio Lipoli, and bigger sister to the Vico 21 and 30. And quite a big 35 it is too. Let's have a quick wander around from the pontoon and we can see lots of freeboard, vertical stem, short moulded anchor roller, split pulpit, hull side port and there's a quite a pronounced chine that starts around here, around the midships and we can see it as we move aft. Here, the stone bathing platform has been lowered, and from off the boat, those are the main things to note rig, double spreader, directional, well strapped apps, taken to chain plates. And the first thing we notice when we're on the boat is the deep moulded bulwarks, which seem to be coming back into fashion. Not a bad idea at all. So the lowers cut across the deck a little bit, so just dip inside those as you walk forward. And on the way we can see a centre hatch to small outboard hatches which are in fact extras. As we move forward we can see that there's a centre hatch and two small hatches outboard which are in fact extras. And then back here we have twin wheels, almost inevitable these days, and extra features here are the hand wheels and the nav instrument pods and there's a hinge down bathing platform and engine controls here and a fairly deep cockpit actually nice nice high combings it's almost up to shoulder level where you're sitting there isn't it so yes it is indeed it looks it from where I'm standing and uh, we can see the full bit main sheet to travel here, which looks good, at least the main sheet is where you want it. So we'll leave it at that for now, and we will be heading out shortly, and we'll find out how this boat actually goes. Okay, so here we are in the Solent on a rather glorious day. Seem to have had a few of those recently, but this is without doubt a glorious day. Not a fantastic amount of wind. Probably struggling to get over about seven or eight knots. But it's warm and sunny and there is just enough breeze to sail, if not to push the boat seriously hard. And we are making up wind on the Vico now. We don't have a log impeller that's working, but our GPS speed is giving us just over four knots hard on the wind, 
flat water, minimal tides at the moment, so that's probably reasonably true boat speed. We had a look on deck earlier on when the boat was still alongside. So let's see what it's like. We can't really say out at sea, but at least underway. Barely enough wind to heal us more than 10 or 15 degrees at the very most. So the boat is having it pretty easy. Nonetheless, it makes you appreciate these deep moulded bulwarks that give you pretty firm footing. Would certainly help if you were bouncing around at 20 degrees of heel. And then along the leeward side, you'd normally walk inside the cap shrouds here. You've got the stainless steel handrail as a useful foot bracing point the moulded non-skid seems okay on a fairly level surface and in dry weather but there's quite a lot of deck that isn't covered that is smooth and I think that might make me a little bit concerned for going any distance uh, a few bits of anti-skid tape I think might be very reassuring addition. The furling drum is, is low, so you've got a low tack for the headsail, which is, of course, a good thing from the efficiency point of view. It does mean that with the split pulpit, once you've borne away, of course, the foot flops outboard, and then when you harden back up, you either need to skirt the foot inside the pulpit or you do it the lazy way as we did and you just give the boat a sharp luff with the sheet slack and the sail flops back in and then you bear away and sheet in so as long as your um, helm and crew work is up to that that's the easy way of doing it or I make life hard for yourself. Sail, full length, top two battens on the main and two partial patterns. Spars, I don't know what section they are, they're unbadged, unmarked. They seem to do the job, although the tack horn is fairly small. So we have Lumar steering, twin wheels, it is a single rudder, backstay, split, a little way up and then just a, a four to one purchase which is not a great deal if one were sailing half seriously one would want a lot more power than that but that would be an option to add more chunky cleats aft and forward and spring cleats here as well and all, all the stanchions, interestingly, set into bases with screws so it looks as though they could easily be removed. Is, is, is that a, a feature designed to allow easy replacement of a bent stanchion or is, or is there something, something more to it? I, I can't, uh, <laughs> can't comment on that, I don't know the particular. No, but it's, it's good in a way that um, you, you've, you've, got pretty, you've got nice big bases and um, to, to, to distribute the, yeah, yeah. the, the load, and if, if you do bend a stanchion, um, all being well, you're not going to crack the deck at the same time, and then you can take the stanchion out. Yeah. Um, so some elements of it appear to have been thought about, says I, graciously. <laughs> <laughs> Patronisingly. Uh, there, there, might, there might be another reason that I, I haven't, uh, haven't twigged. You know, uh, tracks here, fairly short. Hardware is Lumar, uh, deck organisers are Lumar. Blocks unidentified, spars unidentified. 
sails. Uh, are, are these the sails that come with the boat? Yes, yeah, standard sails, yeah. Vector sails. And Furlex drum for the roller reefing. A reasonably close shooting angle on the head sail. We've got quite a lot of force day sag here. Just need a bit more rig tension. That does look a little bit floppy, or it certainly would be in any breeze. Here we go. Down below. Companionway steps are fairly straightforward. The only thing is they are flat, there's no bevelling, no anti-skid, so fine when the boat's upright could be a bit more challenging in a seaway, but let's have a quick overview first. Well, we had a quick overview earlier and saw that it is fitted out in European light oak. Um, Detail-wise, we have galley with two burner hob and oven with a reasonable amount of gimbling on it. Tap for the our long nose, long flexible nose, which is not a bad idea. Sink. Cool box. Yes, there is a refrigeration unit in in here, bottom hinged locker, lockers along the outboard side, and moving forward along the port side, switch panel, no easy access to the back, doesn't, doesn't hinge down, a little bit of fiddled shelving, hull port, saloon berths either side are straight, and about six feet long, so they could be used as sea berths if you so want. Table with drop leaves, stowage above the compression post, headroom comfortably over six feet. This boat has the arrangement with the two double aft cabins, so one to starboard here, and the same to port, with hanging locker and some fiddled stowage berth, only just six feet long though, and not a vast amount of space on the inboard side, but this is a 35 footer into which they have crammed or fitted twin double aft cabins. If you want more space and fewer berths, instead of having the second aft cabin here, the heads, which is here, is extended, it's made longer and moved aft. That leaves space for a small nav station here, just forward of where the heads bulkhead now is, and the space that is the aft cabin is used for a large locker. So private owners might feel more tempted to do that, and then the other important thing is that the port aft cabin runs a thought ships, so it is an awful lot bigger, because at the moment they are cosy, if you have two of them. While we're at this end of the boat, let's have a look at the engine. Lift up the companionway steps, which are quite hefty, and there's nothing to keep them up. And there's no insulation either, rather interestingly. 
So companionway steps come up, very heavy, nothing to hold them up. So it's a bit of a, a job to even hold them up while I'm poking the camera in here. It's actually quite hard work and interestingly there is no insulation anywhere to be seen in the engine compartment. The engine doesn't seem unduly noisy but I'm sure it would be a lot quieter with some insulation. Then let's just drop, try not to drop that but lower it down again and go into the port aft cabin and here is an inspection hatch giving you access to the aft end of the engine and let's go in there and have a little bit of a poke around it's quite warm we have motored some of the way back against the tide and there is an opening port to the cockpit and a fixed hull port and overhead solid moulded headlining in both aft cabins and in the saloon too. So no easy access to the fastenings for the tech hardware which would suggest that they are tapped in there roughly up here. So and some of them up here clutches and winches so you would need to find a way in if you ever wanted to do anything to them or if they're tapped into alley plates uh, that can present its own challenges in time. One nice thing about the boat is that it has no interior mouldings apart from the heads so access to the outer hull is good, remove the backrests here and there you are straight out to the hull and that looks like a fairly substantial frame there running up to the chain plates and under the bunks here just stowage on the starboard side under the port side are the batteries. These berths, these saloon city berths are both just over six feet long one slight irritation, a very minor detail, but the aft cabin door here on the starboard side, both sides in fact, have nothing to keep them open. The joiner is reasonably tidy, I think, on the whole. It's quite angular, no, no uh, nice curves, but that door really needs something to hold it open. So does this one. And the doors to the fore cabin don't have anything to close them apart from the latch where they meet so in any sort of a seaway that is going to slat around very irritatingly easy to resolve but would need to be done fore cabin berth here a little bit longer and fairly generous width Aft hinged, uh, hinged fore hatch, fore cabin berth, a little bit longer than the others, well over six feet. Fixed hull ports, hanging locker each side, fiddled shelving on top, solid moulded headliner. Again, very low level bunk actually. It's unusual to find them quite so low these days. They're normally higher to create more width. And under the cell boards, log and echo sounder, transducers, and stowage under the bunk here. So just turning around and looking the other way. Let's move back aft and essentially that is it. That then is the Fico S 
35. Let's have another look and try and sum this boat up. Well, it's, it's big for a 35 footer. It's inexpensive for a new 35 footer. You get a lot of boat for your money. It does have some nice features. These raised bulwarks, for example. The cockpit works pretty well. It has this hinge down bathing platform, of course. Um, the, the rig on this one is, is, is bigger, as we said earlier, but we needed to depower the rig and the boat really isn't set up for changes of gear. We started in about four to six knots of breeze and then it picked up to substantially more and the boat really was pretty much at, at the limits. Uh, we had full, full lock on occasionally just to see what happened and the boat would not respond. So, so yes, it's, it's not a boat that wants to be pressed hard. Fundamentally, it looks as though it fills a, a niche in the market in that it's a similar price to some smaller boats, but it is an awful lot bigger. So a lot of the interest is coming from people who are looking to buy more volume for the money. And it seems to sail okay in light to moderate conditions. Not a, a race boat, not an offshore cruiser, but a, a fairly high volume, comfortable coastal cruiser. cruiser. And that's, that's what it's designed to do. And in that role, I can see it becoming quite a popular boat.